Hello and welcome. So today we're going to do our second day of the quote-unquote elephant training. And uh, we'll, we'll start with just kind of a quick recap of what we've kind of talked about so far. So up till the age three, uh, our mind is in what they call delta brain waves generally. I don't know why I keep doing that. Delta brain waves before age three. And then uh, so before that, the Aztecs, which the Mendoza uh, the Codex is supposed to be representing, before that they just thought, okay, you just care for your kids and you just try to show them that you build a strong relationship with the children up to this age. But at age three, they start learning how to survive in their, their society. And then it switches right about age eight. And you'll notice, uh, I'll give maybe a lot more examples of eventually here, but uh, there's these, these ages are very universal. So a lot of cultures have these different so, for example, at age seven, there's in, within the Greek culture, there's uh, people take children take on tutoring relationships at this age, and then in the Spartan one, they 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 change their training as far as their military training. They they start to to live in with men in a society into like the barracks at age seven. So same kind of thing, and uh, there's there's these relationships. Uh, it usually gets a little bit more aggressive at this point. So we can see it with the parents doing with the kids here. So while they're developing their last sort of layer of their brain function, I guess you could say, they're, they're getting these people kind of giving lots of corrections to the sort of elephant trainer. So they're trying to remove the elephant trainer from the situation is what I'm trying to say. So the people, the person, like I say, we're, our psyche is like a person riding an elephant. These people are trying to keep the trainer off there as much as possible. So the person will be a more productive member of society. Keep in mind, uh, if you can, we can maybe notice this in our own society, right? Everybody that's out for themselves and that doesn't necessarily help the collective good of our society, right? Everybody's going to be trying to get their own money and get their own power uh, that maybe is detrimental to everybody. So what they're trying to do is get rid of that rider here and uh, get rid of his influence and make it about what the parents want. And what the parents want is somebody that's going to help their society rather than be out for themselves and an ego. And then at age, so it, this one was alpha. And then it switched to beta at uh, age thir 13 here. So at 13, we become beta waved and uh, there's a slow progression of like faster and faster, uh, more oscillations in the sort of brain waves as we get up to this point. And then they're kind of taken over at age 12, 12, 13. Uh, but this is an age that a lot of cultures consider people to be adults. And this is also when puberty hits as well, but uh, that's another thing altogether. So the age of seven to 12, is, is important, but the pre seven age is obviously quite important too. So the Jesuits, uh, so we're a Christian group that were closely tied with Catholic Catholicism and uh, sort of put in opposition to the sort of enlightenment thinkers at the time. So they were supposed to be very well read and uh, have a very good grasp on what was uh, the, the, the sort of debates that were happening in the world. Anyway, uh, they, they, they had this maxim to say, give me a child for the first seven years of life and I will give you the adult. So that's a very strong statement. Uh, and somebody tested this with the Up series. I don't know if anybody has watched this one that's watching this, uh, watching this video, but these kids were put in this program and now they're, I think they're in their 70s or something. So they, every seven years they'd catch up with them and see if what the first seven years of their life really made such a big difference. And uh, it was an interesting series. I don't know if it really, what way it really developed this, but uh, it's it's hard to say now that the world's changed so much, how much these things would be true in a time before or in a time now. But the fact that this, this started as a maximum should tell us something. Uh, these pre seven age, I think this is how hypnosis works too. So keep in mind, there was no violence used by the parents before age seven. And uh, it's because we kind of want to do what people 
with authority sort of tell us to do before that age. So when somebody's trying to hypnotize somebody, and hypnosis uh, got asleep actually in ancient Greece, but uh, somebody's trying to hypnotize somebody, they're just trying to get them to relax. And there's some people that won't relax enough for it. So if we take the example of the elephant and the elephant rider, they won't let their elephant rider calm down or lay down on the elephant and just go with the system. They'll, they'll always be kind of, no, we got to be careful. No, we got to be careful. We can't let this happen or whatever else. And I, to be honest with you, I think that probably happened to me if I did it. But uh, I know a lot of people that have had been hypnotized. And what they'll tell you is just that you just really want to do it. And uh, you can be convinced of some pretty remarkable things and you'll believe it. So people believing, I mean, the, the obvious ones are like, well, people think that they're chickens and they do it. They act like chickens or dogs or whatever else. But like interesting ones, like uh, you tell somebody that they don't know what the number two is, or they've never heard of the number two, and they'll they'll count their fingers and skip over it. And even if you give them the like the, the some some prom, to promote the idea by or give them motivation by saying, okay, if you can do this, I'll give you five thousand dollars. They still can't do it, and it's pretty remarkable, really. But it, this is that pre seven age where you just you'll go along with what you're told kind of thing, and that's why I think if we can put people back in these earlier brain waves, they'll they'll just do this. This will be what they do, just like the parents up till age seven. Uh, an interesting counterposition to this is that the this mind, the pre seven mind, is works incredibly fast. Uh, the, the 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 one that develops from seven to twelve is really slow comparatively. Uh, it, it's good at focusing on one thing, but when we're focusing on many things, the chimpanzees are a good example of this. Uh, this is research done in Tokyo, I believe. And uh, they get a monkey to, sorry, not a monkey, a chimpanzee, to uh, put these numbers in order, and then they actually make the order disappear right after they touch it. So in this side, you can see that they, they all just kind of go blank, and they have to put it back in order. And uh, they're way better than people are at this because people are trying to focus on one thing, right? Because our sort of human part of our mind is, is that's what its job is. And we'll talk a little more about that in a second. But they're far better than humans. And it's, what's interesting is if you watch the documentary about this, they'll say, nobody really knows why, but kids are better than adults at this. And to me, that makes total sense because we just go back to that earlier brainwave that takes in things more collectively. So everything's seen at once from one person's eyes and they, they see it as an entire scene and they just take it in. But uh, the egoic mind, people say, uh, a lot of archaeologists will say that it was really developed over this and it, the requirement is to focus in on one thing. So when we're making things like uh, spear points or um, when you're making an arrowhead, you're, you're really focused on that one thing and making it a certain shape or whatever. And we, most of what we do, most of what, a really interesting story that Steve Jobs used to talk about is that he said that we, he was talking about a study that he saw when he was a kid and that uh, humans, as far as biomechanically, are really poor at uh, being efficient. But he, and like uh, there was a bunch of birds that were obviously the most efficient because they could just glide in the air and everything else. But uh, w w what they did was they let people have a bicycle and then it outperformed all the other animals because obviously a bicycle can, with a lot less effort, can do a lot more work. And what he took from it is that we are tool makers. We are people that are meant to be inventive and, and come up with these ideas and make our lives easier. I think that's somewhat accurate, that uh, this process of tool making is, is very closely connected to who we are or how we developed. So <laughs> this is an interesting thing to get into because uh, let's let's think of this as the rider. So obviously this looks like a really positive relationship, right? I'm going to tell you that I don't think this is necessarily a good thing if we, if we extend this analogy. So this little girl's got a good relationship with her horse. We, a lot of us know people that have dogs or we have dogs of our own. And we have a good relationship with it. But we do want something from the animal or the 
the pet, but it's kind of like a, uh, how do they put it? Um, it's not like a parasitic relationship. It's more of a commensal uh, working together. There's mutual beneficial, mutually beneficial. And for the dog, it obviously gets fed and it gives us care and love and everything else. And that's why we kind of, it's sort of a give some, take some kind of relationship, right? Uh, so if we think of that as, as far as the brain, we have the frontal lobe up here, which is kind of the seat of the ego, as we talked about, which only develops from seven to 12. And then the rest of the brain that's developed before that. And there's sort of this relationship of, of mutually positive in this situation. And usually people like this are very ambitious and often they go to school and they do things that are, are going to be, uh, they think are going to make them their lives better or make them happier. But uh, I think in a way, maybe this isn't such a good thing. Maybe this is just our mind orienting itself towards ego goals. So these dogs, like I say, they look like they're in love with the, what they're doing, but they're chasing a synthetic rabbit, something that's not going to give them any fulfillment really. So if we're chasing ego goals in the world, maybe that's the likely, or the, what will likely happen is we'll, once we get them, we're just going to be disappointed with what we get. So if we have a good relationship with the ego, it's maybe not the best thing. So maybe that's another argument for why the parents that are being abusive, uh, they're probably doing it because they think they're doing the right thing. As for somebody that has this work relationship, also not great. So in this case, they're, they're doing something together, but this one is more of a, a do what I want or you're going to get hurt kind of deal, right? So we, they're through that training process, there's this sort of situation of hitting the animal and everything else. And, and nobody wants that, obviously, but it's, it's still a relationship, but it's a little bit more about dominance than it is about working together. But in this relationship, it's, it's the ego in charge as well. So this is, if you think of this as far as horses, this would be like a work animal, one that just works. So the, the old man and the horse could have a really good relationship, but it is based on this understanding that the horse works for him. <laughs> and uh, I think of this as a lot like people that work a lot in their lives. I know people that work every day of their life and work all day, wake up early as they can in the morning and work as late as they can at night every single day. And they don't have to. One, the person I know that I'm referencing is somebody that has uh, not had a direct job in his entire life and really has no responsibility to do work. But it feels like if you do it this way, and if there's a, a sort of uh, violence towards the animal, if we take this, this metaphor a little bit further, that as soon as they go home, and there's no work involved, that's when they feel terrified. Because now all of a sudden they've got this person in control and they're not running the animal. So the person on top is, is sort of jumping off the animal and now his egos are generally going to be driven by fear and driven by uh, getting what they want. And it seems like fear is their main tool. So people, this is why... A lot of people in, that work a lot also drink a lot. I mean, uh, that's a big, big statement, but, but I've seen enough of it to, to kind of see the tendency of people, uh, people that have to work in order to, to avoid their fear part of their mind rather than master that part of their mind or have a sort of commensal relationship with it are people that want to block out that part of the mind with alcohol or some other drug or whatever else. Anyway, I, I don't mean this is a negative thing. I think I, I'm as good a worker as I am an intellectual, I think, and I'm pretty good at uh, working. I, I think it's a, it's a great thing and it can keep your mind occupied to do something. And people are often happier just working than they are not doing anything. I think Einstein used to say that if you want to uh, life is like riding a bicycle in order to keep it going. You, you have to keep pedaling. You have to keep doing stuff. You have to keep motivated. And we think about the mind with a good relationship with the ego is that 
you keep going by changing your goals and trying to achieve your goals. In this one, you just keep on working just to keep on working. And But work's not, there's nothing wrong with work, right? Anyway, so we're going to tie this up with uh, chatting about Life of Pi, but we're going to do that another day. And uh, I, I feel like uh, Life of Pi really touches on a lot of these same issues. So we'll, we'll chat about that in a few days here. But anyway, we'll leave you there today and uh, hope you enjoyed. We'll talk to you soon.